Hey, I'm Charlie from Travels with Charlie. Nice to meet you. Hi, my name's Marcos. Welcome to the Montshire. You ready oh. to show me around? Oh yeah, yeah, come on upstairs. Have you been to the museum before? I haven't. No. Oh, there's so much to look at, so you want to make sure to go and take a look at the bubbles and see everything we have over there. show you this thing right over here. All you have to do is just crank this and then some balls will go all the way up and then they go all throughout. You gotta do it a lot. Oh, okay. You got it. That's cool. You got I it. like that. All I like right. that. So here's where I leave you. Um, if you need to get in touch with me, do you have a phone or anything? Well, cell phone coverage is pretty poor around here, as you know, so uh, I brought my own phones. This will work if I oh. need to get in touch with you. You take one and I'll keep the other one. All right. Let's, let's try it out here. A few tangles in it, but... Oh. Disaster. It, it'll gonna... work. It'll work. All right. Oh. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you. You know why? Because of science. That's how this works. Absolutely. It works great. Do you have a long distance line? I do have a long distance plan, as a matter of fact. I came prepared today. I'm going to lay more fiber. There's absolutely no coverage here at all. Huh? Welcome to Travels with Charlie, Vermont Politics in Real Life. And today we're going to be talking about connectivity in Vermont with my guest, Representative Laura Sebelia and Senator Ann Cummings. Thank you both for being here with us today. We're at the Monshire Museum underneath the watchful eye of the moose over here. He's keeping an eye on us. And I may have a solution to some of the problems we have with connectivity in the state. And I know Ann's kind of looking at me like, really? <laughs> it works. <laughs> Bluetooth. This is... <laughs> you can get 5G with it. See, one, two, three, four, five, and you just kind of hold it up like that. Mm. Look at that. Here Connected. Go. Wouldn't it be great if it were that simple? <laughs> it would. Uh, <laughs> before we get into, you know, talking about connectivity in the state, and it is a very important issue, not just for the pot, you know, so people can talk to each other, but economically, what that does for the state, uh, how it'll help the state build and even in some ways how it's holding parts of the of the state back where specifically in rural areas where there is no coverage at all and there seems to be an area that we don't hear a whole lot about mm -hmm. and it's out there right now and it's the use of satellites mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we we tend to pursue this let's lay more fiber and yet if we wait just a little bit maybe mm -hmm. for Satellite, you're a little skeptical. Mm -hmm. I seem to think it might be sooner than we, we think. You're not as optimistic, Laura. I think I am optimistic. Um, I don't know if I'm optimistic for our rural areas. I'm not really keen on, you know, waiting for our rural areas waiting much more. They've been waiting an awfully long time. And we're still not exactly sure how this is gonna work. Yeah. The rural communities, your kids, can't do their homework right. if they can't get on the internet. Um, we're seeing more and more emphasis on people working at home, especially when it's bad weather. They need that now. Um, if we wait five years, those towns may be ghost towns. Some of them are that close. The last time we did anything this big was rural electrification, That's right. and that was federal money. Yeah. And there is supposedly more federal money coming, but I haven't seen it, have you? Not yet, although yes. I, I think that there is. I think you actually hit on really a key point with regard to SpaceX and the satellites, and that is, you know, private industry is doing it. Yeah. And, you know, that's exactly what we want to see. It's exactly um, right. the type of innovation that we hope will impact Vermont but we're gonna see that in the places where it's profitable first, yeah. okay? Yeah. And so what Senator Com uh, Cummings and I spent a lot of time focused on last year is the places where the market is not working and where it has not right. um, So what you're successful. saying, the, these SpaceX and, and Amazon, they don't really care about the Northeast Kingdom or other parts of Vermont where there's no coverage because there's really, there's no customers there, right? right. Well, I'm saying I think it's, you know, the next innovation. Yeah. You know, we may see that they're able to deliver much higher speeds yeah. um, for much lower prices. Um, and, you know, maybe it will be fantastic for the rural areas as well. But, but it's, uh, the, it's the age old question, which came yeah. first, the chicken or the egg? Right. It just, it gets back to my original thought about just, you know, maybe waiting a little while longer instead of putting a lot of money into 
fiber, we just wait. We won't put that money in, and we'll be pouring it into a different technology. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. I don't no. think we can wait. We're at a public safety issue, really. Yeah. I mean, we've kind of moved past. You know, it's really necessary for the economic well-being. You know, Senator Cummings has talked about kids in schools. Yeah. But really, with health care, with public safety, we've got the we we have our copper landline is deteriorating across this country. And you know our legacy phone providers are contemplating with the federal government how they can shut that down, and so you know the sense yeah. of urgency around this is increasing yeah. and not decreasing. Global connectivity. Well, let's talk a little bit about the economics of connectivity sure. for the state, not just for the country, but you know, specifically for our state here in Vermont and what that means and what you see it if we're able to bring that connectivity to the parts of Vermont that don't have it now. How important is that? How will it change Vermont? Reinventing the rural economy is a national issue. Uh, it's, it's not just Vermont that's graying. We've got just rural communities that are dying. It has the potential um, to create kind of smaller businesses in rural areas that can be connected to the rest of the world. The rest of the world is getting there and Vermont needs to, it, it's, it's survival. Any idea, you know, we talk about connectivity in every part of Vermont and, you know, laying fiber optics um, and we know how difficult that can be and we get into this area of it's not, you're not able to do it, or in some instances, anytime you're laying pipe or you're doing anything where you bring the big trucks in, somebody's gonna be out there with the sign going, no digging, and then you're held up in the courts. We have, in Vermont, also a great example of how to do this um, community fiber, which is EC fiber. Uh, and they were a really large part of the formation of our bill yes. last year. And that, you know, is, a, EC Fiber um, is a CUD, it's a communications union district, mm -hmm. and that is something that came together um, with communities and residents that were really desperate to get the service and knew that it was not going to be provided for them. And I can assure you, Charlie, that we have communities and residents like that, that throughout the state. You know, in Southern Vermont, I'm aware of at least two groups of 10 towns that are um, starting to talk about CUDs right now based on our legislation. I'm sure that Senator Cummings has heard oh, about the ones the in Central Northeast Vermont, Kingdom. There's Central one up Vermont. out of St. Johnsbury. Sure. The problem is they can get revenue bonds and you, bet you pay for it with your projected revenue, but you have to have the revenue before you can get the revenue bonds. So we came up with some startup money and yes. then some backup money for if they don't make it so that they can borrow from the state, get their fiber up and running, get their customers online, and then they have the revenue to pay back their bonds. You know, we're trying to put together as many tools as we can so that you can um, follow these models, these successful models that we've seen in Vermont. And so I actually feel really optimistic um, about a pretty significant expansion. You know, people around here are dying for service. I got my backpack with me and I wish I brought either a hacksaw or some pliers with me. This is, we're actually supposed to be able to take these apart. Mm. Uh -huh. I don't, it might be easier to get connectivity in the rest of the state as opposed to, <laughs> are you good at doing this, either of you? No. That's, that ring is supposed to come off there. I'm not sure how that's going to happen. I don't know. because you I want a 10 year old. I want a, yeah, a 10 year old <laughs> will solve it. In fact, you know, one, of the, you one of the points you brought up um, earlier, Ann, was about uh, you know, helping communities to to know about what's going on, and 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 you said that there is somebody now that's that's helping out. We asked the Department of Public Service to hire a person to be a resource to um, the communities. And if you're talking about stringing fiber, that technology is not that difficult. Yeah. But really the finances, what's it going to cost, what's it going to cost per household, how many households do we have to sign up, putting together a business plan, right. putting together just all of those things yeah. that if you're a rural community, there isn't somebody down the block that knows that you can just go 
down and talk yeah. to. So um, we're learning as we go as to what's needed. Um, and I think we learned from EC Fiber, uh, they're our poster child, but it's going to be different in every community right. we get to. Where we have a concentration of population, private business will come. Absolutely. They're solving the problem. Right. They're innovating. Yeah. They're, yeah. you know, yeah. meeting the market need. You know, it's these places that have the failed market and this increased sense of urgency around public safety and health care, all of these things all that these we can't wait. We really give you cannot wait. Both a magic wand. Okay. You can wave it. Okay. And whatever you'd like. I'd like to find out how to take that. And I'm going to find that out before I leave here today. <laughs> how to get that ring off there. I'll give you the magic wand, Laura. Okay. In the next five years, yeah. I would love to add one or two more people to the Department of Public Service to work intensively with these communities, help them flesh out these plans. Um, I would love to convince the governor and private investors that we need some more loan funds in, that these business plans are going to be such that the subscribers will pay it back and I would like to accelerate the build out. Uh, for our rural areas, happy to see satellite be successful, this low orbit satellite, yep. and really um, continuing to uh, push innovation in our population centers. And? I'd like the billion we, dollars. Hey! You gave the right answer! <laughs> we have the billion you dollars. Win. Everything, could, I mean, everything yeah. could be done. What if what we're talking about doesn't happen? In five years, we haven't moved forward at all, and we still see the exodus of our population leaving. What if that happens? We're in big trouble. Yeah. Yeah, we have some towns that are really starting to lose their ability to you know, provide adequately for their for their people and yeah. people that aren't able to leave those towns. Yeah. So I think a sense of increased vulnerability and um, neglect yeah. in yeah. some of our towns. It will be very hard. It will change the culture. I want to thank you both for taking time out of your busy schedules to, to be here with us today at the Monshire Museum. Thanks to the Monshire <laughs> Museum for having us. Yeah. And before we leave, we're I, that I am going to find yeah, out how <laughs> we can get the ring off this. But thank you both for being with us today. My, my good friends, uh, thank you for being here today. Laura Sibilia, Representative, and Senator Ann Cummings. Thank you both for being here today. And I want to remind you that you can watch more episodes at truenorthreports.com or go to Facebook or YouTube, Travels with Charlie. And I'll see you in my travels. Let your thoughts run free. Show me how to get this ring off. It says there's a twist, Charlie. There's a twist. There's a twist to solving the puzzle. I'll see you in my get it. <gasps> oh. I won't get any shows here at all. This is Hello. Oh, finally. I got service. Hey, Ma, can you pick me up in about 10 minutes? Yeah, I'm finished here. Yeah, great. Thanks. Hello. Hello. Siri, call AAA. Hello. Hello. Hello!